Hey all, I'm continuing to play with Hangouts Chat, and as I continue to play, I learn a little bit more what about what this can and cannot do, and I've had some interesting observations, and I wanted to document them in this video. Uh, so once again, Hangouts Chat is uh, the Google variant of Slack. Um, I have an earlier video of Slack. Um, Slack, the reason why I value it, is it provides uh, a platform or a digital space where you can communicate with other people. You can make it as public or private as you would like. Um, just by its very nature, Slack is a bit private as you have to be invited into the space. And then once you're in the room or in the space, you have a number of uh, channels that you can invite people into. So you can have public channels within it, or you can have private channels where only specific people are invited. And you can spawn or start up new uh, channels as you see fit. But then also you can, you know, individually or direct message people if you want to send them a note uh, just one on one. Um, so Slack is a really powerful place to have a semi private or as I've talked about in blog posts, a semi permeable membrane to communicate with other people. And so I've been investigating the use of Hangouts chat. Uh, I use Google Classroom for a lot of my teaching and learning, and I'm interested in a variant of Slack to use for my classes. Uh, in the past, I've used Google uh, Plus and Google Plus Communities for my classes, and that worked really, really well. Uh, this was before I've started to use Google Classroom. Um, and so I've been looking for something along those lines to run discussions, and I was thinking that a Slack version or Slack itself would work, but I'm not going to have my students sign up for Slack. Uh, so Hangouts Chat seemed of interest to me, so I've been exploring it a little bit. I had my institution started up for us so that we could test it out, and now there are two people that are testing this out at the institution, but not really, and here's what I'll explain. So we had uh, the instance started up um, you know, so you can see the branding of this thing. So it has that little at sign and chat. Um, the URL is chat.google. Um, and so for the most part, and I have an earlier video on this, for the most part, it, it looks like Slack. Um, the difference would be, you know, you have people identified. Uh, instead of channels, you have rooms. I can add bots, but the bots integration, to my understanding up to right now, and I'm still exploring this, is um very naive uh not really naive but it's a bit uh convoluted how you would add bots i think the bots work uh far more efficiently they work well in slack i don't see them working as well here in hangouts chat as of yet um certain things that i like and don't like i like the the uh clean look of uh, the of Hangouts chat, um, but there's a lot of things I don't like. Um, so you can see here, I have a colleague of mine that we started testing it out to see what would work and what would not work and, and what it looks like. And then, um, so we were talking and I set up a room for us to talk within, uh, and you can see that I have very little uh, very few features, I should say, in terms of setting up the room. So I can't really have a private room. So for the most part, everything is either I'm talking directly to people or I'm talking to rooms. Now, recently up, they updated this and they separated out the people from the rooms. When I first started playing with this a couple weeks ago, it was very annoying because they just had a list of all of my discussions. So this TEDU list would be listed right along with the discussion with Christian and with Mendy. Um, it is very, very annoying because you had to separate those out. They separated those out into people, room, and bots. Makes it a lot easier to see what is where. But when you look at the room, uh, if you set up a room, this is their version of a channel. You set it up, there's no real way to edit after the fact. So if I go in, I can add specific people to this. Um, so for the most part, you have to have a group within email or, uh, you know, individual emails to invite people in. So you're having it. It's you can't just send them the link, at least right now. I can't send them the link to that room within Hangouts chat to join. That's something that I can invite people in pretty quickly in Slack. So that still is a bit uh, problematic. I also think that, um, you know, the, the organizational structure of the rooms is, is tricky. 
One thing I do like with this is it's somewhat threaded discussion, so you can see I can have a discussion with Mendy where she says something, I say something. Um, one note is that what was a bit odd is that I sent Mendy a note testing this in the public feed, and then when I created the room and added her to the room, it pulled over half of the discussion. So that's kind of annoying to figure out where. Um, so you can see we were talking for a little bit, and then she asked, she responded over here in the room. So it's a bit annoying where those are a bit dis, uh, disconnected, but we're still figuring out how this, this tool works. So they have a bit of a threaded discussion here, so I can have dialogue. Um, I can come down here, and if I want to, I can either respond back to this uh, post that I have. Um, I can, you know, go in and I can upload materials. I can have Google Drive links, which I like. I can start up a video meeting uh, right away, so that I like as well. And I can add emojis and send off messages. If I want to, I can also start up a new thread, uh, so I can have a somewhat threaded discussion. And you'll see this here, where I'll have like this thread into discussion, and the new one starts here. So. That works out relatively well because, you know, when this first started, when my usage started a, a couple weeks ago, the threads were not that pronounced. So it was just a stream of information and an easy way for my students to get lost, at least in my opinion. Um, so the rooms are still problematic. I think it would be pretty annoying to uh, add 25 emails of students to add them into a room. Um, hopefully it works a little bit better. Uh, I'm starting to think about workarounds, but you know I'm still playing with that. So if I look at discussions that I have, um, I can see that it brings in predictive text to responses, something that Google's folding in across. I can have history of the discussions, um, but for the most part, it's the normal stuff that we would expect to see in Slack. Now here's where it gets very weird. So I I was using Hangouts Chat on my uh, desktop. I didn't install it on any of my apps or devices. Um, I didn't use it anywhere else, but I do use Google Hangouts. So as a refresher, Google Hangouts is, or it has been, their tool that you would be able to text message, you could uh, you know, text chat with other people, you could do some audio chat or video chat, um, but then you could also um, you know, have this across your spaces. So I've used Google Hangouts, and then they had Hangouts of, on Air, which is is a totally different beast. It became like a YouTube Live. But Hangouts I've used for a number of years in my classes, and I recommend it to colleagues at my institution. And this is a way that I triage student concerns. And so at the beginning of the semester, I sign them up for Hangouts. They use their institutional Google account. And if any student has a question, I say before you email, before you uh, send me, you know, show up for office hours, you can send me a text message. You could give me a phone call. But I said, let's start with text, text messages. I can respond to and solve most of the things with a text message. Um, I have this on my cell phones, my devices, and my laptop. So it pops up wherever I am, and I can quickly triage a student concern. If it's something I can't handle, then I can say, hey, why don't we just have a quick video or a voice call and we can solve this problem right away. 99.9% um, .9 of the time it's a text message. Sometimes I slip into a phone call or a video call, but I have other videos about my use of Hangouts. So I use Hangouts and I use it all over the place. So an interesting thing happened where uh, you know, Hangouts has uh, is in the process of being deprecated, meaning Google's getting rid of it, and they are now bringing in this Slack competitor, which is Hangouts Chat, and then their video conferencing side of things, which I believe is called Google Meet uh, or Hangout Meet. I think it's Google Meet, but the Google Meet is pretty much just this video call function. So it's not really the text message or the phone call, it's just this video. And I, I will have videos um, exploring this in the future. So the interesting thing is, I have Hangouts installed on my devices, and then all of a sudden when students start emailing me or sending me messages through Hangouts with questions, concerns, challenges, stuff like that, it started to populate in Hangouts chat. And so 
the only person I was interacting with at this point was my colleague Mendy and then all of a sudden I started seeing student requests and concerns pop up in Hangouts chat and so what would happen is my my Hangouts app on my phone would buzz and then I it, then I would come over here and then Mendy would send me a request or a comment and that would show up in my in my Hangouts as well and my Hangouts chat so all of these different streams it appears that Google's basically just connecting all of these wires together and sort of like reformulating a new tool very confusing um, so my takeaway at this point is I could see myself using Hangouts uh, chat as my student concern tool and so instead of so right now I'm using my personal account but if I go to my credential my my institutional account you can see that I have as this loads I have a lot of student requests and, and comments and questions um, over the years that are all here so instead of this interface I might have something like this and then I would have students here asking me questions and I could have groups of students um, in rooms. So I might have a, a help area or a help room. Um, so it's very awkward how this is this is operating. Um, I'm continuing to play with Hangouts chat. I don't see uh, the use of it for research purposes as I suggested before. I don't see the use of it for uh, my classes as I've suggested before. But the good news is my use of Hangouts, traditional Hangouts, as I've used it for the last couple of years, worked. Uh, it worked for student issues. It worked for student concerns. So I think I'm going to continue to do that. But instead, it's going to look like this Hangouts chat feature. Um, and so that was one of the concerns that students indicated a couple of weeks ago. They said, hey, this is going away. This is being deprecated. What are we going to do if we have to send you a quick note? The, the truth of the matter is you'll still be able to, but it'll be Hangouts chat now um, as opposed to anything else. What I would like to see Google do, it, they're probably not listening at all or don't care to this, but it, care about this. But what I think Google could do that would be very powerful is if you're going to fold Google Plus and get rid of Google Plus communities and that network and you want some good interconnection and some messaging, uh, some messaging tools built in, I would love to see them fold in Google Groups. So this is Google Groups as it currently stands. They updated this a couple years ago. Um, you can see I'm a member of a lot of different groups. The nice thing about Groups is that you can keep it as public as you want and as private as you want. The good thing about Groups is that you can add people to a group. So when I was doing work with Batch Chain, you could have people in a group and you could have this group be private so the five six people that are in a group could be there together to talk um, but then you could also have a public group so a lot of the the digital badge groups that i've been a part of those are public and anyone can join them when i did work with with mozilla and web literacy stuff um, those are also public and so anyone could join so what i could see is this these signals these groups if you had this as a part of a Google group, I think it would be pretty easy and a powerful tool to take Google groups and connect it to this Hangouts chat. And so over here, instead of rooms, I might see groups. And then I could have my groups all listed there and I could add and, and remove uh, groups as I see fit. I can create groups either here through Hangouts chat or I could head on over to Google Groups again and on a, you know, at a much finer detail, add and remove people and stuff like that. So right now, my, my review of Hangouts chat is, is tepid at best. Um, I'm still exploring and playing. I'm going to play a little bit more with um, their Hangouts, uh, the, the, the talk, the, the video feature. I think it's called Hangouts Meet. Um, so I will continue to play with that and, and talk a little bit more in the future about what it what it looks like. But I, I'm I, I think this could be a good tool for handling student requests, but I don't see an opportunity right now for having student discussion in classes, which I was hoping to add 
to my use of Google Classroom. I don't really see it fitting in here, but then I also don't really see it being used for research tools. Um, I'd rather use Slack for that. I think Slack, actually with Slack would work better for both purposes. For research, I think it is an easy fit because my colleagues won't have a problem with Slack. But if I'm signing on a group of teachers, you know, 50 to 100 teachers, I see that as being problematic. If I want to sign in uh, 50 to 75 students per semester um, or 100, 125 students in, if I'm in K-12 uh, and using Hangouts Chat, I also see that as problematic. Um, so uh, please let me know if this works for you, what questions you might have about Hangouts Chat, um, things that I didn't get quite right. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments or send me an email. Um, as always, uh, please subscribe to the video if this was of value to you and give me a thumbs up if you liked it or a thumbs up or a thumbs down if it didn't quite work for you and I sort of belabored it to the end. Um, so once again, thanks a lot and I'll ha I hope you have a great day.